Um, is it hot in here? I might be premenopausal. I might. I'm sweat. Are you sweating? Okay. Um, there's going to be a lot of decisions that you will make and choices that you will take. Forks in the road, just like I had. Successes and failures. Opportunities to grow and, as an artist and times when you will learn more about who you really are. I've learned a great deal over the past three years since my graduation. That was a joke. Three years. <laughs> my first piece of advice, and you guys are all artists, so you know what I'm talking about. That inner voice that we have, listen to it, like the one that that one's letting out right now. <laughs> listen to that inner voice. Not the one that tells you that you need that new Prada bag, but the other one. <laughs> the one that is your creative soul. There will be times when people will tell you to do one thing, but your heart tells you to do something else. Listen. Emerson, yes, I do know who Ralph Waldo Emerson is, told us none of us will ever accomplish anything excellent or commanding except when they listen to this whisper which is heard by them alone. I'd gotten two offers on Broadway, Annie Get Your Gun or Charlie Brown. Everybody in the world said do Charlie Brown. I mean, Annie Get Your Gun. It's job security. It's Bernadette Peters. Charlie Brown, six people on the show. Wah, wah, wah. You're going to be, you know. Everybody, including my agent, you're making a big mistake. I listened to my voice. I'm something like, i got to do this Charlie Brown show. Skip to success. Discover your artistic passion. What inspires you? A beautiful street, a museum, a sandwich from Chick-fil-A with a side of ranch at the Haynes Mall food court. <laughs> Be inspired so you can inspire. What he said, it's all about inspiration. You are graduating in the time when a world is desperate in need of inspiration. We are desperate for it, right? Art has the power to change lives, provide hope, console in times of grief, ignite activism, and enrich the lives of everyday people with beauty and wonder. Amen, sister. <laughs> you are joining an important tradition of people who are brave enough to push beyond themselves anything that they thought possible, believe me, I'm one of them, who dare to dream bigger and brighter than most people and who know what sacrifices are necessary to achieve those dreams. I'm so glad I have a good profile because that's what you guys are saying. <laughs> My friend John Lithgow once said, out of suffering comes creativity. You cannot spell painting without pain. There's an uplifting thought. <laughs> to my future directors and choreographers, I say my because I will be working for you one day. In fact, that's why I'm here. I'm available in August. I got two movies back and back. I need a job. Follow your vision, you people. If you are passionate about the way you see a play, a work of art, a musical, an opera, a ballet, stick to your vision and bring it into the world when you can do it right. Hold your head a little lower when great achievement comes your way, and hold your head high when the road gets bumpy. Some of the best learning and growing experiences I've ever had, other people have viewed as failures. I had a huge hit sitcom called Kristen on NBC, like in... 2000. Exactly. <laughs> but, thank you, thank you, sir. It was one of the best chapters in my life. I learned so much. I'm so thankful for that. I challenge you to create the kind of safe environment that lets your artists be encouraged be courageous in their work. Allow them to fail, for that is the only way growth can happen. Inspire them, okay? Now, to the future producers who have all the power to change the, our industry for the better, and a wee bit of advice to my fellow actors. Always be nice to the monitor behind the desk, even if they only refer to you as a number or call you Kirsty Chenowitz. In five years, they might be running ABC, <laughs> or they might be the next booker for the orchestra. Be a person that artists want to work for. Always treat everyone, every single person you meet with respect. That way you will be the most beloved and the world will be your oyster. Inspire them. I thank you in advance for what you're going to produce and how your work can and will change the world in the way we see it and that you'll hire me. 
Ronald Reagan once said, there is no limit to what you can accomplish if you don't care who gets the credit. Food for thought. People say to me all the time, and this happened a lot after 9-11, hey, this ain't brain surgery. Well, no, duh, it's not. But being an artist is important. We all have the opportunity to put our own special stamp on everything we do, and we all have the ability to inspire. There's that word again. This is a, my most favorite paragraph, not, not because I wrote it, but because of what I want to tell you, what I've learned, and how my life has become better. I've been very fortunate in my career. Some of you know what all has happened. Some of the most amazing experiences have, as, as a professional artist have brought me such happiness. But I have also devoted a good bit of time toward using my skills to change the world around me. I donate performances to important causes, especially for Broadway Cares, Equity Fights AIDS, and the Actors Fund. I'm on the board of A Step, Artists Striving to End Poverty, who sends highly trained artists into poverty-stricken areas and uses the arts to inspire children to imagine a better world. This past year, I started my own charity, Maddie's Corner, dedicated to increasing awareness and for support for animals and animal shelters. So, no, what we do isn't brain surgery, but we are the people who donate our talents to raise money for the research, write or perform the musical that tells a story of dealing with brain surgery. Yes, I was in a play called A New Brain. And make the patient laugh and force people to forget about the pain for a few hours. What we do is important. We inspire. And finally, to my fellow actors, dancers, singers, designers, musicians, filmmakers, artists, always push yourself to refine and get better at your craft. Even now, I take voice lessons. My classical training has allowed me to do eight shows a week on Broadway, play the Metropolitan Opera, and also play a floating head in the animated movie Space Chimps. <laughs> Two hours after your life that you will never get back, by the way. <laughs> I'm being honest. Never let anyone tell you that you can't do something. Don't be afraid to fail, for you just might succeed. Take risks. I'm the number one risk taker. Bette Mittler once told me that her voice teacher in Hawaii told her to give up singing, that she would never sing professionally, that she would never make it. Skip to four Grammys later. I wonder what that teacher's doing now. I just, out of curiosity, would love to look around. <laughs> you suck, period. <laughs> Learn to love the thing, this is important. Learn to love the thing about yourself that makes you different. <laughs> As you may have noticed, I'm very petite, and I sound like a cross between Jessica Rabbit and Betty Boop. <laughs> I remember early in my career hearing about a Broadway audition for the new Kander and Ebb musical Steel Pier. The role called for a tall, glamorous showgirl with a high C. Well, the high C I had, the legs, not so much. That didn't stop me. I auditioned for the heck of, the heck of it. After all, what did I have to lose? What did I have to lose? No. In spite of the fact that all I could see in the audition room were a sea of butts. <laughs> Just butts. I hung in there, and I'm so glad I did, because I ended up rethinking the part for little old four foot eleven me. Be in the moment. Be in the moment. Not just on stage, but in life. Isn't that what we're taught, actually?